Here we're at the World Snowmobile Headquarters Museum located in Eagle River, Wisconsin. Kind of neat on the outside. The windows all have uh, pictures on it. Kind of neat how they got that arranged. Different racing events. Snowmobiling. The starting line. Think these guys are nervous? Family fun. Look at that little mischief maker. I think he's being coached on by the dad. The big mischief maker. It's a fun sport, snowmobiling. Beautiful scenery up here in the North Country, Northern Wisconsin. Just beautiful, excellent, and the people are so nice. Eagle River is just a welcoming com community. Meet new friends. A lot of people will get together in the winter time and maybe the only time and uh, they'll snowmobile up here. In fact, you can even uh, go ahead and rent a snowmobile. You don't need have to buy one. You can rent it. Rentals are very popular. It's very much a family event. We are so fortunate to have this museum or snowmobile headquarters up here in Eagle River, Wisconsin. Very nicely laid out. Their phone number is 715-479-2186 if you wanted more information. Their hours are from Monday to Saturday from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Check this out, free admission. How many times do you get into an event like this for free? Uh, $3 per person, $6 per family is suggested and it's well worth it. If you're up here in the North Country, Northern Wisconsin, you really do make it, have to make it a day to come visit Eagle River, Wisconsin and the Snowmobile Museum. It's a huge facility, well, well displayed. Now I've been here before, so I've uh, I've kind of taken in all the sites and and uh, what's all uh, involved with the uh, museum. Uh, it will take a couple hours to actually go through it, and if you're an avid snowmobiler. Uh, it'll take you longer because some of these older sleds it's going to bring back the uh the old memories and uh here we have the director hello welcome to the world snowmobile headquarters um i'm sarah anderson i'm the creative director here so everything at the museum tells a story so let's take you on a little tour and show you around perfect They do have a gift shop here. Some really neat stuff in there. In fact, my wife, when I brought her up here, she spent most of her time in the gift shop. Yeah, we have a great custom puzzle here that shows different um, snowmobiles that are on display. And then posters are always popular. So behind you, you're gonna see a nice drone shot from the 60th anniversary of the Derby. So just incredible racing right next door. We're 200 yards. Um, behind turn four so you can just walk across if you're at the derby track here we have the fox track ice cycle in the early days this happens to be a 1964 model there is a lot of confusion what to even call this contraption well the way it uh, all turned out the name has now been snowmobile Right, what's unique about our ice cycle is it doesn't have a track. It has a great big wheel 
um, underneath and it went about 15 miles per hour on a frozen lake. So you, it looks kind of like a simplicity tractor. You could put your gear on the back and you know have a fun time out catching some fish. So you're also going to see behind us a bunch of vintage helmets. So it's interesting how the snowmobile clothing and helmets have changed through the years. Um, everything's gotten lighter and warmer as uh, um, technology developed. We've gotten um, better clothing and better materials uh, to make. Well, here we are in room one. This uh, facility has several rooms just jam-packed with vintage snowmobiles. I will let say, and also uh, Sarah's got a, a surprise for us at the end of the video. When I seen this snowmobile, I was amazed. I never thought I'd get the chance to see this snowmobile, which you'll see at the end of the video. So in this uh, starter room here, we have lots of trail machines. You're going to see everything from snow jets to rups to sport fires. Um, of course, skidoos, and, um, and we've got a couple utility machines here on this side. So our single ski alpine, this was our primitive groomer. So back in the day, they had little rusty drags about the size of a bed spring. That's what they pulled behind this one. Right next to it, we have your trail maker, and that had to be a rough ride. Another utility machine, but the skis are like a guardrail. Um, behind it, you're going to see some great vintage clothing, so a bunch of John Deere items. I like to call it the Rainbow Warrior suit, so complete with moon boots. So when your moon boots were new, you were actually two inches taller. So those of us who are vertically challenged liked having the two inches of foam um, and gave us a little boost in the winter time. Oh, I remember those. Uh, and very popular is our trail roamer. This one has a um, regular steering wheel and pedals. You only need a light jacket, great heater, stereo system trunk. You can really ride in comfort. Same designer that did the Manta and the Raider. Um, this was his third design. Kind of has that boat style influence. We like to call it the James Bond of snowmobiling, but definitely would be fun to try. Okay, we're going to get into some of our antique snowmobiles. To be an antique snowmobile is 1968 and older. Uh, we do have a 1970. Our Grand Prix here, it has the butterfly style steering, so it had more features than most. The fancy seat, triple headlight, but people like the steering on that one. Um, lots of the machines have animal names. We've got our scorpions, we've got our snow pony, and then we're gonna move along into um, some antiques here and before skidoo was skidoo it was called ski dog but when they made this decal they made it very streamlined and they ended up cutting the g off in design so now in 1960 it, it got known as skidoo that's really? how skidoo got its name interesting so this is just and this uh this is actually the start of players correct yeah so we have an early uh comment here and you're going to see another Fox track. This one is a 1975, so it looks like a Simplicity tractor. And then the oldest one in our museum is this 1953 Elison. So um, number one is on display over in Saner. So Carl Elison, who developed this brand of snowmobile, it was the first single person machine. He was a trapper, and back in the day, he had a club foot, so he couldn't snow, shoe, or ski. So then he put a boat motor in a toboggan, and then it just advanced from there. Um, in the picture, you're going to see um, an Indian motorcycle motor, and then this particular machine has a Briggs and Stratton motor. Next to it, we have our Esca motor. So lots of the antiques started off as the rear engine machines, but that one has the seat that looks like a kitchen chair. And then next to it, we've got our little Andy. So there's lots of fun minis throughout the museum. So for the smaller snowmobilers, uh, those are always fun. That was designed by a p petite engineer at Polaris and his name was Andrew. Additions to the museum, almost uh, once a month the snowmobiles change here. So it's always fun to stop back um, every few months to see what's new and interesting. This is our 1960 Snow Traveler. It's 12 feet long. 
it's quite the machine with a, a great big engine. And this was before everything was all recreational for snowmobiling. So this was used to get the big jobs done, to haul the wood, to do the chores in the winter time. So it was very innovative back in the day and helped the economy to get, uh, people were able to get things done in the winter time. So the rarest one at the museum is our Spirit of 76. This is a prototype Evan Rood. So you always wanna keep in mind, everyone that made a motor made a snowmobile. So you had your outboard companies. Uh, Mercury and Evinrude stopped making snowmobiles in 76, so this never went into production. This does have your aircraft steering, the wing on the back, twin tracks, rotary engine, and then they tried putting the suspension in the skis. So kind of our evil Knievel of snowmobiles here, and things were patriotic in 1976. A couple of fun minis. This is our Junior Brute Alouette. It is the smallest one in the museum. Our Snow Cub. Uh, it was 120 pounds, and this one is 115 pounds, so just slightly smaller. But the kids sure enjoyed those back in the day. Do you know the history between the jack-o'-lantern racing team? Um, we do have a picture of the team here from back in the day. That was huge. Yeah, so Articat, um, that's what they wrote for this team. And this is one of the original machines. This was Dave Fahey's snowmobile. Hundreds of pictures of great racing photos here from six years of racing at the Derby track right next door. And how the kids get started is they race on the mini oval. So then you're going to have a couple of series for the kids that race the 120s and the kitty cats. So it's great to get a world championship even when you're just a kiddo. And that's how we get the professional racers. They've got to start somewhere, so they start on the mini oval. Wait a minute, that's not a Polaris. That's a Articat. That is a kitty cat. Yeah. Um, it's wrapped as a Polaris for sponsorship. Sure. But it is actually a kitty cat. First time that ever happened. <laughs> Okay, this is a fun exhibit here at the museum. It's our transcontinental trip. So in the class of 2021 in our International Snowmobile Hall of Fame, we have Jim Langley and Craig Dalen. And they took Polaris Colts um, starting at Vancouver, Washington. They touched the Pacific Ocean and then they went to the Atlantic Ocean in 24 days. Um, they averaged 168 miles a day but back then, they didn't have the trail systems we have now, so they had to make their snowmobiles street legal. That included having um, tail lights, your seat belt, um, a windshield wiper, a full-size license plate, and they actually had wheels on the front. So you'll see that. So they were 26 and 29 when they did the trip, and just a lot of determination on to ride these old snowmobiles that far. Their gear wasn't even that warm. They didn't even have a full face helmet. Some more world champions here on display. We have the 04. This was Chuck Decker won the 1987 world championship on this one. And we have the seven foot trophy there behind it. So we like to do things big here in Eagle River. Next to it, you're gonna see Dale Ritz. He is a two time world champion. Um, next to that one, you're going to see Al Fenhaus won the Derby 30 years ago on this one. And we do have his leather suit on display. And next to it, we have Mark Mondes' leather suit on display. And we do have the Yamaha version of the twin tracker here for Mark Mondes. There was only two Yamaha twin trackers. Everything else was Skidoo. Uh, they were specialty built racing machines that had twin tracks. So in this part of the museum, you're going to see our Derby Wall of Fame. These are our world champions. This is the premier race. This is where people want to win. This is the big one. And so on this wall, you're going to see 59. We've had a 60 derbies now. So we're going to add um, Matt Gaty's to this wall at the following derby. That's how we do it here. But back in the day, they raced for what we was known as the Snowy Cup. The Snow Week Cup you're going to see in several pictures. Um, over here we have P.J. Wondersheim. He was our first four-time winner, and he was like Dale Earnhardt. He always had to keep his eye on the prize, so he had a picture of the Snow Week Cup taped to his dash. 
Um, next to it, you're gonna see Cardell Potter. He was our 2015 winner. You could never miss him on the racetrack with that high viz paint job. And next to him, we do have Nick Van Strydek. He's a two-time world champion in 2012 and 2017. And more recently, the Snow Week Cup became the Snow Goer Cup. When they stopped publishing Snow Week, it became the Snow Goer. So you're gonna see the Snow Goer Cup in more pictures. Uh, we do have Blaine Stevenson won four in a row, but Jay Middlestat did break his streak in 2022. Uh, we just had a 60 at the Derby, so we have a newer style of trophies and a special to commemorative medallion. If you actually raced in the 60, all the racers uh, received that medallion. Have anyone seen the movie The World's Fastest Indian, where they race the Indian motorcycle across the desert? Well, this particular chaparral has the paint job based on that movie on that motorcycle. So you're going to see the number 35 and the Roadrunner. So just a super unique paint job, but you could always recognize the chaparral when it was on the track. So here's one more world champion. We have Matt Schultz. He was a two-time world champion. His first win as world champion was on a Polaris, and then he switched to Skidoo. But very exciting, right next door to that is our Yamaha from 1971. This was the most exciting derby race in history. This was where Mike Trapp battled Yvonne DeHamo, and for 15 laps, there was 13 lead changes. So it's exciting to have all these world champions on display, but especially this Yamaha um, complete with his race helmet. And this was a phenomenal race to watch. If you've never seen this race, you have to YouTube it. It, uh, like Sarah said, from 1971, and uh, what's so unique about it is that uh, Yamaha was relatively new in the snowmobile industry. In fact, uh, they do say that with Yamaha winning that race, that's what kind of launched them into the snowmobile industry or being well known. And what's so unique about this is uh, Mike Trapp had a 433, 433cc, and Yvonne Duhamel had an 800 cc and uh, when you look at the uh, uh, the video you'll notice that uh, Yvonne Duhamel was not was not a happy man in fact uh, throughout the one time in the video it shows where uh, Yvonne tried hitting Mike Trapp's kill trip switch so that, it, it, it's probably the most exciting race I've ever seen. So one of our displays here is the military ride display that's been going on for almost 20 years um, next door at the Derby track. They bring in veterans in every January and Martin Luther King Day and they get to write, write, watch the vintage race or the Derby race on the Sunday before. And then they go for a Derby ride, all expenses paid. Um, on the trail to thank our veterans. So yeah, everything tells a story here at the Derby track, everything from the vintage clothing. Um, we have a whole oil can display when you had to mix um, your gas with your oil cans. That was always, so thank goodness for technology to make that easier. Um, we have a Yellowstone special display. So this is a two up snowmobile that was used for trail riding in the mountains back when the emissions changed. Lots of uh, race history. Here's Yvonne de Hamel right there. That's Yvonne? Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, more vintage clothing. Um, few originals here. Our Kawasaki is straight out of the crate. It's never had the fluids in it. So if you did add the fluids, uh, we could make a run. So we're happy to have one. That one was donated. That's one of a handful. Most of the snowmobiles are privately owned here and on uh, display for a minimum of a year, but uh, things are always changing. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. I'll tell you, it's, uh, I've been here several times and uh, every time I come here, it's a different display. So it's, it's quite unique. So even if you were here at the museum several years ago 
uh, come on back because it's all different, all different. Yeah, we want to thank you for visiting the World Snowmobile Headquarters. Um, we have a great big um, feature of our International Snowmobile Hall of Fame, not to be missed. That's the recreational side. They have five categories, everything from inventors, people in publishing, um, all different kinds of volunteers. Even Bobby Unser is part of this. So you're going to want to take in the history of the people as well as the machines. Um, we appreciate any donations. It is free admission here, uh, but donations help us keep the lights on. on. Thank you, Sarah.